بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Tara Khalid I like to welcome to our program here at Sharjah Broadcasting Authority the Paradise and Hell and in this respect we hope and we pray that all of the viewers of our programs get clarity about the reality of Paradise and Hell and that they make a distinctive choice now while we're living to become among those who believe. As we know, there are so many concepts today which are being broadcast globally 24-7 to keep people confused. And of course, many people think that this is all fantasy. And with today's uh, technology, the way that things are presented, and of course, we need to understand that much of this manipulation is coming from Satan, and then many people don't believe in Satan, <laughs> as an example. So if you don't believe that Satan does exist and that you do have an avowed enemy, which Allah says Satan is your avowed enemy until your last dying breath, and his, his uh, mission is to take as many people as he can to hellfire, if you don't believe in that, if you think that is just a story or a fiction, then actually you're in very serious trouble, in a dilemma. And if you don't believe in the scriptures as they were revealed historically to the prophets of old and until the last and final prophet Muhammad made a peace and bless of Allah subhanahu be upon him and before him Jesus made a peace of Allah be upon him and Moses and all of those made a peace and bless of Allah be upon all of them and all of the prophets who came before them who told the people about paradise and hell or heaven and hell whatever terminology that you want to use to describe an afterlife, life after death. And it's interesting when you see modern writers, for lack of a description, say, well, this is something that man created for his own mindset. And they go into a lot of uh, intellectual descriptions of why man created, supposedly created God and he created all of the other things, all the other elements that go along with belief in religion, that man created religion himself. Not that this belief is coming from our creator and sustainer, that nothing happens without his knowledge, nothing happens without his permission, that the submission to the one and only God is the only true success, and that what we're experiencing in this world, however successful we may be or if we determine our lives as a sex or not, even if someone says, well, I'm a failure, I mean, failure based on what? Related to what? Are your failure related to obeying the commandments of your Lord? That's the real failure. If your failure in other ways, it may be to a certain degree, but this is the most important thing if you understand that and you put it in its correct context. And this is a very great argument today as there are so many people due to the set of circumstances that we found in the last year or two, or their lives are in total turmoil and confusion and continue to be that as uh, we uh, become manipulated in one way or another by men and their, w <laughs> their desires. So it is essential if we look at this from a higher level, if we take it to a higher level, meaning that no one can, manip can manipulate us if we have the proper connection with our Lord and we understand what it is that he wants from us and we are submissive and obedient to it, that that becomes the means of security for us in this life and more importantly for the hereafter. If we don't have that relationship, then we put ourselves at total risk in this world and in the hereafter as well. And that they are interrelated. And this is what people think, well, oh, you know, this guy, he's a liar, he's a cheat, he's a thief, he's a murderer, he's a killer, he's gotten away literally with murder, he's done this, he's done that. No, he hasn't gotten away with anything. He says, well, what do you mean? He said he hasn't gotten away with anything. And whomever suffered due to him will get their rights. If they don't get their rights in this world, they'll get their rights in the hereafter. And in the hereafter, he'll have no recollection of whatever he had in this world. This world would have been to him this a, a world of the opposite of maybe what he experienced. You have no recollection of the 
benefits that he received from whatever it is that he did in his criminal activity in this world. It would be the opposite for him. And similarly, the person who suffered under a tyrant would have no recollection of the suffering that he endured in this world. So it would be the converse of what we're seeing today. And this is based on belief. It's based on belief. And the person says, what well, I don't believe, I says, well, fine. If you're willing to take that chance, don't you think that that is not wise? If there were tens of thousands throughout the ages of prophets and messengers who came to people in different times, in different languages, different cultures, but they invited the people to the oneness of Allah and obeying him only, not disobeying his commandments and living in a particular manner that they would be the people who would receive his eternal blessing. Tens of thousands of prophets and messengers throughout ages. Would you just say, well, I don't believe in that. This is just something that someone made up. And at the same time, you believe in what some people presently are saying, something that they've developed themselves, that the world is about me and about what I do. Yes, it is about what you do, without question. But <laughs> don't say that there isn't a hellfire and there isn't a, a, a heaven or a paradise. That may be convenient or appear to be convenient for some people. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I met Ibrahim السلام, the Prophet of Allah, on the night of Isra, and he said to me, Oh Muhammad, وسلم, convey a message of peace, salam to your ummah, to your nation from me. And tell them that the paradise is good, of soil, of sweet, of, of water, and that it is an empty plain, and that its plants are subhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. So if we look at this, we're saying that Ibrahim, the Prophet of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met him in the heavens and he explained this to him, to explain this to the people who come after him. Now, <laughs> somebody said, okay, brother, you know, this, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, sounds to me like some kind of tale. Now listen to what Allah says in, in Surah number 28, verse number 88, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And invoke not any other God, illa, meaning along with Allah. La ilaha illallah huwa, none has the right to be worshipped but He. Everything will perish save His face. What does it mean? What does it mean? You know, there are many people <clears throat> who believe in a final day in different ways. And, and we're saying that obviously that these people at some point in time, whatever their present belief system is, that there was someone who came to them who brought some revelation and somewhere along the line, they have some bits and pieces of it, but not the complete. So they know that there's going to be a day of judgment. For example, most people say we know there's going to be a final day and we know there's going to be a judgment in between good and evil and some people are going to go to paradise and some people are going to hell. There are millions of people who believe this minimally and then the confusion comes about what happens to you after you die, uh, how, do, how are you judged between being good and evil, what is the reality of heaven and hell for, for, as, as an example, who will go to hell and who will go to paradise? And is there any in between between this? So there's a tremendous amount of confusion, which is understandable. But we're dealing with the fact of its existence, the existence of paradise and hell. And, and people need clarity on that before you begin to follow a particular way, let's say, and we're saying that way of truth is Islam. First, understand what is heaven 
or paradise and what is hell and deal with that reality and also accept the fact when many people are still deluded about death, <laughs> it's as though they think they can escape death. You have people who say, well, uh, I know people are dying and in my generation or most of my friends and most of my family members have died already, but I'm not ready yet. <laughs> when you're saying you're not ready yet, okay, who's ready? But the question is, you can't avoid this. You can't avoid this. And you know that. If you're 90 years old, you know most of your years are behind you and you know your time is limited on this earth. So what are you talking about here? What, what are we playing with? What, what, you know, we need to have this reality of what's happening with us now and what will be our next phase of existence. And we need clarity on that. It needs to be clear. So we're saying clearly, it, it, it is without question that there is paradise and there is hell. In the Surah Al-Mudathir, Allah SWT says, uh, more or less, this is Surah number 74, verse number 26 to 30. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Soon I will cast him into hellfire. And what will explain to you what is hellfire? Nought does it permit to endure, and nought does it leave alone. Darkening and changing the color of man. Over it are 19 angels as guardians and keepers of the hellfire. So, subhanAllah, you know, in the Surah Tahrim, Surah number 66, verse number 6, Allah says, Bismillah ar oh, you who believe. And, and Allah is talking to the believers. Save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones, over which are appointed angels, stern and severe who flinch not from executing the commands they receive from Allah, but do precisely what they are commanded. So Allah is telling you that, you know, the hellfire is real. For people that want to joke about it and who uh, want to Say, well, take it lightly. Well, you know, me and my friends, I know, you know, I don't want to be <laughs> a hypocrite now. Why should I change now? That's crazy. That's crazy. And I met people says that, why do I want to change now? You know, my, me and my friends, we're going to be there. I know what we do. We're going to be there. It's not going to be a party. This is, this is foolishness. You know, and I've heard people make these kind of statements uh, in a joking mode or mood. Uh, this is not a joke. And reported by Bukhari and Muslim, Abu Harir and Anas reported that the Prophet said, people will, be, will continue to be thrown into hell and it will say, are there any more until the Lord of glory places his foot in it and its different parts will come closer to one another and it will say, enough, enough by your glory and honor. This collective of Bukhari and Muslim you know, <laughs> Allah, you know, may Allah protect us. And Muslim reports that Abu Hurairah said, we were with the Prophet and we heard the sound of something falling. The Prophet said, said, do you know what that was? We said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, that was a stone that was thrown into hell 70 years ago. It was falling through hell until now. So uh, we're... we're for people who say, oh, well, you know, this is, uh, we don't know about this. You know, I am following Jesus Christ. And they say, oh, I'm following Musa. They say, we say, fine. Okay. If, if that is the case, then understand something, that there is a link between all, the, all of the prophets. Don't be one of the ignorant people who says, well, I'm following Jesus Christ, alayhi salam. I'm following Moses, alayhi salam. So I believe in Moses, alayhi salam. So I don't believe in Jesus, alayhi salam. I believe in Jesus and I believe in Moses, but I don't believe in Muhammad, alayhi salam. This is, if you think about it, if we, if we understand the lineage of the prophets of Allah, the, the prophets came at different times to guide different people, and some of them came for only one person. So with saying Islam came for all of humanity until the day of judgment. The completion of man's religion is with Islam. And Islam has given us a comprehensive methodology 
of how to obey the commandments of Allah and how to be saved from the fire of hell. It has given us a guideline of how to be among the people who Allah favors who wish to enter the paradise. It gives us an alternative for however that we're PC people living today. And, and, and it's very obvious. It's very obvious for those of us who have lived for some time on this earth that our societies globally are going further and further away from normalcy and that, you know, the behavior that we're seeing is abnormal and it's becoming the normal. And of course, these things were mentioned about the actions that will take place in the last days, the actions of people, which we've done programs about, the actions of people in the last days, the habits of people in the last days. And how people will go away from the belief in Allah. And the person who is trying to hold steadfast, he will be belittled and targeted as we see today. And, and I want to put this in for this before we close. The attack on Islam that you're seeing globally, a lot of people misunderstand that. People are seeing the politics and the economics and all these other things. This is a secondary factor. We're not saying that this is not part of the reality, but this is not the ultimate reality. The ultimate reality is the invitation of Satan to distract people away from the clear path to take them to paradise and to have them believe in false information so it'll be easy for them to be distracted from that which is true and to take falsehood as their path. Simple. People say, well, I don't believe that. But I say, okay, let's give us a simple example. Where people themselves have become slaves of their desires. This is also talked about, the Prophet Son mentioned that in the last days there will come a time where sex will run rampant so much to the point where a man will fornicate with a woman in public like donkeys, as an example. So let's look at what we're seeing now and music will run rampant and women singing songs. And uh, he mentioned specifically alcohol. Now it's drugs and alcohol to take it to another level. Just look at the conditions of societies and the influence of drugs and alcohol alone. And violence, he talked about violence. So we're seeing all of these things happening in front of our eyes right now. We're not looking at this clearly and judging it clearly in relationship to our Lord and what will happen to us after death. Think about it. Think about it. The time is limited and our time is up for this program today. We hope that by Allah's mercy and grace that you are among those who follow the truth and the clear path to righteousness. And if you are not, may Allah SWT guide you to that path. My name is Tara Khalid. Well, thank you for joining us here at Charger Broadcasting Authority on Paradise and Hell. And may Allah SWT grant all the believers of paradise and those who in disbelief be guided to this truth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.